James LaFerre here with the Impossible Channel. Well, there's a flesh-eating bacteria, yeah, if you're having skin problems, you know, severe skin problems. It's been a while. Actually, it's been since 2010. Ring a bell? Okay, so back in April 2010, there was an explosion at British Petroleum Oil Rig, and it resulted in millions of barrels of oil contaminating the Gulf of Mexico, right? So despite the drastic measures taken to prevent an environmental catastrophe, an oil slip produced by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill covered over 60,000 square miles. It was ugly. So Cynthia, well, this was the solution, right? Cynthia is the brainchild of the J. Craig Venture Institute, which was engaged in genetic engineering and synthetic geno geno genomes, sorry, synthetic genomics, Inc., was created and funded directly by BP. It was believed that Cynthia feeds an oil, but it turns out now that it is equally willing to consume all forms of organic life as well. I'm reading this from the March Against Monsanto.com website, very interesting website. In 2011, Cynthia was unleashed in the Gulf of Mexico and in its initial stages of life, it was absorbing oil slicks at breathtaking speed, so it worked. It was miraculous, right? In January 2011, the register reported scientists were particularly impressed by the speed. That on which the, this bacteria was eating its meal, but then this bacteria mutated and soon was feeding on organic life forms. Strange reports started coming in from the US. For example, like 5,000 birds falling victim of an unknown disease in Arkansas, or more than 100,000 dead fish found off the coast of North Louisiana. It was also reported that a total of 128 British Petroleum employees that participated in the liquidation of the oil slick was struck by some mysterious illness. According to various sources, they were forbidden to seek relief in public hospitals, so so to prevent them from talking to, uh, to, to anyone and... Well, you know, what happened, folks, is that they're not talking to, um, to, to anyone about it. No one knows about this. Uh, soon... It was recorded that the disease and the symptoms that are now associated with coastal zone of the Gulf of Mexico began spreading to the continental United States. For example, people who were caught by heavy rains that came from the Gulf of Mexico were also exposed to it. And only now they're telling us. In fact, such disturbing reports have become pretty common. In spite of the restrictive, me restrictive measures taken by the U.S. government to prevent this information from spreading, like I told you before, in particular, it's been reported that certain individuals who were unfortunate, and unfortunate enough to take a swim in the Gulf of Mexico often found themselves covered in itching sores only to die in agony a few days later. According to the University of District of Columbia, up to 40% of the residents of, of the territories adjacent to the Gulf of Mexico have become infected with severe respiratory or skin diseases, and one in four residents is planning to pack up and leave in the nearest future. Still, Washington has been pretty determined to mute these reports by announcing that the growing death toll can be attributed to some unknown virus. At the, the rate this bacteria is spreading together with the Gulf Stream, Europe is definitely at risk. What can be the consequences of this voyage? Be if the reports about high... Well, anyway, guys, this is it. It's being detected all over the world, okay? And what is happening in the Gulf of Mexico is not a regional problem, and it, and it can pose a very serious threat to all people in the world. It's a global proportion problem, okay? And the signs of a possible bacterial infection are already beginning to appear everywhere. The mysterious, unexplained illness affecting fish, marine mammals, animals, poultry, trees, and plants arise from the synthetic genomes that transform natural organisms and force them to mutate. However, even at the initial stages of the test trials of Cynthia, many, many experts were vocal in stressing the dangers of synthetically creating living organisms. So Dr. Helen Wallace, Executive Director of the British organization GeneWatch that oversees research, he, well, he foresaw this. And he, he, well, he warned people. So yeah, that's it guys. The US has been hard work on weakening the norms that prohibit the development of biological weapons while building up its own military biological infrastructure and creating a string of microbiological laboratories across the world that are being run by the Pentagon. The activities of such laboratories are not being supervised so there's absolutely no guarantee that a new kind of monster like uh, Cynthia could outmatch it in the near future. So prepare folks, it may be the beginning of a biological unknown and not talked about warfare. So if you're feeling like you're itching and you're having severe itches or any of the symptoms I've mentioned before, um, this is from March against Monsanto.com, okay, Cynthia, flesh-eating bacteria, you should talk about it with someone that, uh, with some expert, I don't know, you know, this is really, I uh, will seek about, I will seek more information about this, don't forget to subscribe, share, comment below what you think about it, and I'll see you again.
James LaFer here with the Impossible Channel. Well, there's a flesh-eating bacteria, yeah, if you're having skin problems, you know, severe skin problems. It's been a while. Actually, it's been since 2010. Ring a bell? Okay, so back in April 2010, there was an explosion at British Petroleum Oil Rig, and it resulted in millions of barrels of oil contaminating the Gulf of Mexico, right? So despite the drastic measures taken to prevent an environmental catastrophe, an oil slip produced by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill covered over 60,000 square miles. It was ugly. So Cynthia, well, this was the solution, right? Cynthia is the brainchild of J. Crack Venture Institute.